Hello everyone. Welcome to this webinar on a very interesting topic on forex risk management. The topic is importers dilemma when they hedge their dollar INR forex exposures. Okay. My name is Ritesh Victor and I'm a partner and country head at my forex side fintech private limited. And today we will discuss in detail about what we call as the importer's dilemma on hedging forex risk. First, let us understand what this dilemma is actually about. Well, the dilemma among importers is a typical cash 22 situation. The rupee is always weakening and depreciating against the dollar. So the cash 22 situation, what they have is, should I hedge my forex liability risk or should I not hedge? Okay. In my 20 years of experience in the forex market, what I have typically observed and seen is that importers usually risk averse and they are conservative. So they prefer to keep their forex risk under control by regularly hedging their liability risk. Okay. So what our thoughts on this is the fall as follows. Well, if you look at the long term a chart on dollar INR on a long term basis, there is no doubt that rupee has been weakening against the dollar. Okay, but there are very interesting pointers that one need to look at and let us, uh, you know, invest some time in understanding those. Whenever an importer hedges his forward position, he pays a forward premium, what we call as the hedge cost. Okay, so first consideration, what we need to look at is the hedge cost. The second question, what we need to ask is, does the rupee actually always weaken against the dollar? Is it a universal uptrend? Very critical to understand. The third question is, is rupee depreciation actually greater than the hedge cost? Well, what we want to, you know, uh, give certain food for thought is whenever an importer hedges, he pays a hedge cost. Okay. If he does not hedge, the risk that he faces is the rupee weakening against the dollar. So what we actually need to analyze is how has rupee behaved against the dollar on a long term basis and how has the hedge cost behaved on a long term basis. So actually it is a comparison between the dollar INR hedge cost and the rupee weakening on the long term basis. So let us look at what history has to say. Our basic idea was to dig deep inside the data for the last 20 years and analyze how rupee has fared and how has the hedge cost or the forward premiums fared in the last 20 years. Okay. But before we actually get into the results and the long term trend, let us understand what is the methodology that what we have followed. Okay. The methodology where we have compared the dollar INR forwards with the rupee depreciation. The first thing what we need to highlight, uh, what I want to point out is, sorry, uh, that we have taken the last 20 years data set. So the data of comparison, period of comparison is last 20 years data from Jan 2000 till today. And whenever we are taking a forward, we are taking three separate forward maturities. The first forward maturity is three months. The next is six months and the third is 12 months. Okay. Now in each calendar month, we take a forward on the first day of the month. And we also take a forward on the middle day of the month. And whenever we take a forward, we take a forward for three months maturity, six months maturity and 12 months maturity. So whenever we are taking a forward, we pay a forward premium for this three, six and 12 months or taken on the first day of the month and taken at the middle day of the month. What we look at comparing is how has these forward rates behaved vis-a-vis -vis the spot at maturity. So it is a very simple comparison between the dollar INR forward rate compared to the dollar INR spot rate at the maturity. So it is gains and loss compared by computing the forward rate with the spotted maturity. Let's look at the result. Very interesting findings. 
Now, for the last 20 years, the average forward premium or the hedge cost, what we call as for three months, six months, and 12 months, has been around 4.02 to 4.40 percent. Looking at whether it is three months, six months, or 12 months. Okay, so when you say what is the dollar INR hedge cost or what is the dollar INR forward premium, it is anything between 4 to 4.4 percent. What has been the average rupee weakening? Very interesting. Average rupee weakening for the last 20 years has been anything between 2.79 to 2.98 percent, which means on a long term basis for the last 20 years, the average rupee weakening has been close to 2.8 to 3 percent. These two numbers, the forward premiums and the rupee weakening very clearly indicates that if an importer regularly hedges and pays the forward premium, the rupee weakening does not match up to the forward premium. The rupee weakening is less by around 1.2 to 1.6 percent compared to the forward premium. That is what we point as the average loss. The average loss is 1.2 to 1.6 percent. Now, the total number of observations is around 480 to 490. It's very simple. 20 years, 12 months in every year and two times in every month. So it is typically 20 into 12 into 2. So somewhere around 480 to 490 data points. Now, the percentage successful trades, which means the forward rate lower than spotted maturity for an importer, the successful trade is forward rate lower than the spotted maturity that has been only 36 to 37 percent okay now this is the observation what we have the actual rupee weakening has been around 2.8 to 3 percent on an annual basis whereas the actual forward premiums on the 20-year data point has been around 4 to 4.4 percent which leads that importers lose if they consistently hedge their dollar liabilities. They end up paying 4 to 4.4 percent of hedge cost while the actual risk of rupee weakening is only 2.8 to 3 percent. And as we saw in the table, the successful trade, which means forward rate lower than the spotted maturity, is only 36 to 37 percent of the times. Now, if you look at this is the dollar INR long term trend. Again, very interesting to look at the dollar INR long term trend. This is a typical weekly chart that we follow for dollar INR starting from 2000 to 2020. Now, for a better understanding and better analysis, what we have done is we have split this 20 years into two parts. The first 20 years from 2000 to 2010 and the second 20 years from 2011 to 2020, the current time. Okay, so it is the first 10 years and the second 10 years. Now, if you look at the first 10 years, if you look at the chart itself, the chart is self-explanatory, the rupee weakening has been very minimal. Okay, the rupee weakening has been 0.5 to 0.74%. Now, if you look at the period of 2000 to 2010, India's international business was relatively very less. Okay, India was a kind of an insulated market. We had reasonable export import, but we did not have large export import. We did not have large international participation in, into Indian markets. We did not have large Indian participation into international markets. So things were very different. The second 10 years, if you look at, that is the period from 2011 to 2020, the rupee weakening has been substantial. The rupee weakening has been anywhere between 4.8% to 5.2% per annum. You can very well look at the red line. You can very well look at the upward moving chart. You know, the consistent rupee weakening from 2011-12 to the current time. Now, we multiple reasons for it you know there's the, the reasons are the universe but what has typically changed in this 20, 10 years is that indian participation in international trade has increased substantially our export and import numbers have exploded 
you know international interest into india has exploded indian interest into international markets into international business has been very large significant increase probably that goes on to indicate the rupee weakening or whatever the economic logic is okay now in addition to that chart of rupee going higher the first 10 years static and the next 10 years going higher we need to very critically look at what has been the dollar inr forward premiums or the hedge cost over a long term basis you know to keep consistency in analysis we again split it into two years the first 10 years from 2000 to 2010 and the second 10 years from 2011 to 2020. Now, again, significant difference between these two periods. In the first 10 years, the average annualized forward premiums were anywhere between 2.57 to 2.84%. In fact, there have been periods where the forward premiums were negative. Again, an aberration, but still it happened. It was very close to 0%. It was sometimes went below one uh, uh, negative territory. So that was an aberration, but still on a general trend, the forward premiums were low. Now in the later part, the second 10 years from 2011 to 2020, you would have seen that the forward premiums have consistently gone higher. The differential of interest rates from which forward premiums actually is derived between US and India the differential of interest rates have gone wider, widened. And that is the reason why the forward premiums have substantially gone higher. 5.5%, 5.9% on an average annualized basis. In fact, in a few years, in a few months, I would say, the forward premiums were as high as 8 to 9%. Again, unbelievable, but true. Now, let's look at comparing the rupee weakness with the forward premium for split parts first 10 years second 10 years and the total okay if you look at what i had just said in the previous two slides in the first 10 years the average forward premiums 2.5 to 2.8 percent average rupee weakening very small 0.5 to 0.8 percent so the average loss in hedging was very high two to 2.2 percent because the hedge cost was higher and actual weakening was much lower in the first 10 years now a lot of difference in the next 10 years from 2011 to 2020 the average forward premiums were 5.5 to 5.9 percent which means hedge cost had substantially gone higher 5.5 to 5.9 percent the actual rupee weakening also went higher from 4.8 to 5.2 percent okay earlier in the first 10 years the rupee weakening was less than one percent but in the later part of 10 years 2011 to 2020 the average rupee weakening annually was anywhere between 4.8 to 5 percent substantially higher but despite this weakening the forward premiums were still higher which means if an importer continuously still hedged in the last 10 years, I would have still had a 1% or a half percent loss. The hedge costs are still higher than the actual rupee weakening. Again, the total number of observations since it is 10 years, it is 10 years, 12 months in each year, two times in each month. So it's around 240 to 50. But again, significantly different first 10 years the percentage successful trades were around 30-35%. In the next 10 years, it improved. The percentage successful trades were 38-42%. to 42%, Primarily because rupee did start weakening. Okay, Sometimes the forward premiums were high, low, better than the rupee weakening. Okay, But the conclusion, the overall 10 to 20 years, if importers regularly hedged, their success ratio on the overall 20 years is still 36 to 37%. Okay. Now, first 10 years versus second 10 years given in the observation format. Rupee weakening in the first 10 years were just 1%, dramatically increased to 5% in the later 10 years. Forward premiums in the initial 10 years were very low, around 2 to 2.5%. 
that increased substantially to 5.8 to 5.9 percent in the later part of 10 years. Importers' losses on consistently hedging were less in the second 10 years compared to the first 10 years. Successful trades improved in the last 10 years, 38 to 42 percent, compared to the first 10 years, 30 to 35 percent. Okay. Well, what is the actual conclusion? Well, the actual conclusion is that we need to have a robust risk management system to hedge currency risk on liabilities. We cannot blindly hedge a dollar liability because it is a liability. I have a risk that the rupee will always weaken. Rupee will weaken. Rupee should weaken. Okay. But it will not always weaken. Whenever we hedge our dollar liabilities, we should always look at comparing the hedge cost with the actual rupee percentage, weakening percentage. Okay. We should not end up hedging our dollar liabilities blindly. Everything should be analyzed and then hedged. We should have reasonable hedge ratios. I am not indicating that you do not hedge at all. No, we should not look at extremes. Complete hedge, zero hedge, both are extremes. We should not do it. We should look at a middle path. Okay, we should have reasonable hedge ratios. We should not blindly hedge, but we should hedge reasonably. At the end, what is my Forex AI recommendation? A very strong recommendation what we have done and what we have given to corporates over the last uh, five, eight years is always have something called the first day forward rate. As soon as you, your liability arises, calculate the forward rate. If you were to hedge on day one, what we call as the first day forward rate. So hedge cost will typically in the current scenario will come to around four, four and a half percent. You decide a specific hedge target saving. If four, four and a half percent is the hedge cost, I will target to save 1% or I will target to save 2% from this hedge cost. As soon as the target is met, hedge it. You have hedged, you have eliminated currency risk, you have hedged keeping a target in mind and you have hedged because you have already made that one to 2% or whatever your targeted saving is. So you have met, you know, you know, managed both your risk, your risk as well as the savings. So the bottom line is hedge with a target, hedge with a first day forward rate concept. Don't keep positions completely hedged. Don't blindly hedged. Okay. So that is it from my side, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining. If you have any queries, uh, any questions, please feel free to uh, email me on my email ID, ritesh.victor at the rate myforexi.com. You can even call me or text me or message me on this number, 88606 Again, thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye.